Collab season is here, and this year we have quite the lineup of new servants. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for the cultured man's waiver, Rayness. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize her effectively, and an overall grade, comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're eager to create a successor to the El Malloy family, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so that you can catch all of these spotlights as they go up and help out the channel. But for now, on to Reynas' stats. Reynas has a max HP of 13,543 and a max attack of 11,427. She has above average HP for her class, but her attack is also slightly below average. Meanwhile, compared to the other servants in her rarity, she does have just about average HP, but somewhat below average attack. When it comes to her command cards, Reynas has 3 hits on her quick card, 4 hits on her arts, 4 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.64% and a star rate of 8.9%. Overall, Reynas' stat spread is balanced and very average, with a small advantage towards defense, which is very good for a support. Her Noble Phantasm gain is incredibly strong due to her high hit counts and her arts deck, and her star generating is likewise above average due to the same high hit counts and double quick cards. Taking a look at her skills, her first skill is Advice of the Strategist Rank A. This skill increases the party's defense for 3 turns, between 15-25%, to and it also reduces the party's damage taken for 3 turns, between 200 and 400, both depending on level. Additionally, it will charge the party's NP gauge by 10%. Her second skill is Emperor Shuan of Jin's Command, Rank A. This skill charges one ally's NP gauge by 20%, and it will also increase their attack for 3 turns, between 20 and 40%, depending on level, but it does have the demerit of reducing Reynas' own attack by 20% for 3 turns. And finally, Reynas has Supreme Mystic Code Volume in Hydragem Rank B. This grants one ally invincibility for 2 attacks or 3 turns, and increases their debuff resistance for 3 turns between 10 and 30% depending on level. This skill can be buffed through an interlude, transforming it into Supreme Mystic Code Volume in Hydragem Rank EX. It gains the additional effect of charging an ally's NP gauge between 10 to 20% depending on level. As for her passives, Reynas has Magic Resistance Rank B, which increases her own debuff resist by 17.5%, Riding Rank B, which increases her quick card effectiveness by 8%, and Territory Creation Rank B, which increases her arch card effectiveness by 8%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Reynas has an Arts Quick deck with Quick Quick, Arts Arts Buster, and an Arts Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Unspeakable Formation. It reduces the defense of all enemies for 3 turns, between 30 and 50% depending on level. It also grants the party Ignored Defensive Class Disadvantage for 3 turns, and it removes all of Reynas' own debuffs. Additionally, it reduces the crit rate of all enemies for 3 turns, between 20 and 60%, depending on overcharge. When it comes to ascension materials, I hope you have more than a few stakes lying around, because Reyna seems to really like them. For leveling, she's going to need 8 eternal gears, 10 pages, 9 bicorn horns, and 5 scarabs. Eternal gears can be farmed at the barrel tower in Shinjuku, where they have a 46% drop rate. Pages have a 30% drop rate at Shinjuku Tuchome in Shinjuku as well. Bicorn horns are best found at the camping ground in Agartha, where where they have a 21% drop rate, and finally Scarabs are best farmed at the Great Temple in Camelot with a 12% drop rate. Skill leveling is where things get a little wild for Reynes, as she requires 15 pages, 15 gears, 72 stakes, and 24 tranquil bells per skill. The best location to farm stakes is going to be the Gallows Hill in Salem, where they have a 67% drop rate, and bells can be found at the Bomben Cave at Lost Belt 3 with a 39% drop rate. For those of you who rolled for Kama and were thinking, one smug lowly just isn't enough, Fear not, for Reynas is here. And much like Kama, Reynas more than earns her right to be a little bit sassy through her gameplay. Her stats may not stand out much at first glance, having only slightly above average HP and mediocre attack, but Reynas is packing where it counts, NP gain. She has some of the best raw NP gain of any servant out there, 
and as a support who relies on her noble phantasm, that is one hell of an advantage to have. Her star generating is also not something to sneeze at, as she can produce quite a few from her brave chains due to her high hit counts across the board. Her NP gain and star generating are even further boosted by her respectably high ranking riding and territory creation passives as well. But despite having such strong passives and NP gain, Rainess's best virtue is without a doubt her skills. Similarly to Waver, Rainess's skill set revolves around providing the party with some high utility buffs that are going to be useful in nearly any situation, as well as providing big boost to NP charge. In fact, her first skill, Advice of the Strategist, is literally the same as Waver's with just a slightly lower rank. It provides the party with a 25% defense buff, a 400 HP damage cut, and a flat 10% NP charge for everyone. The value of these defensive buffs is slightly lower than Waver's, but nonetheless, this is still an excellent defensive skill that soaks up a ton of potential damage for the whole party and it can effectively neutralize most incoming damage to zero when paired with other defensive buffs like Masha's, which gives the team excellent survivability. Not only that, but the 10% NP battery is good for helping set up Noble Phantasm. Speaking of which, if 10% NP charge is not enough, Rainus also has her second skill, Jin's Command, which provides a targetable 20% NP charge for an ally, as well as a massive 40% buff to attack, at the cost of weakening Rainus's attack by 20%. And this skill is tremendously strong. Not only is it a targetable 20% NP battery, one of the best skills that a support can have, but the attack buff that it gives is also incredible value. A 40% buff for 3 turns is well above the average for attack buffs, and it effectively makes it into a mini mana burst that lasts for 3 turns. It's excellent for keeping damage up if you're doing something like 3 turn farming, hint hint. And the demerit which is supposed to balance the skill is pretty irrelevant since Rainess isn't meant to be attacking anyway. Finally, her last skill, Volume and Hydradrum, is a targetable invincibility that also increases debuff resist. The skill will receive an upgrade next year, which adds an additional effect of charging an ally's NP gauge by 20%, just like her second skill. Prior to the interlude buff, this skill is a decently strong defensive buff that can protect an ally from an enemy NP and guard against some debuffs. However, after the interlude, this skill becomes an incredibly powerful NP battery, which can be used in conjunction with Rainus's other two skills to set up some very strong and consistent farming teams. For skill priority, prior to her interlude, I recommend leveling Jin's command first for that extra damage, followed by the defensive buff, and then invincibility last. But after her interlude, make sure you level her invincibility first since the NP charge does scale with level. Then you can go for Jin's command and the defensive buff last. Rainus's Noble Phantasm is a very unique one. It neutralizes class disadvantage on the party for 3 turns, while also lowering enemy defense and crit rate and removing any debuffs from Rainus. Unfortunately, the debuff removal isn't party wide, but everything else on this NP is pretty strong. The defense down pairs well with her attack buff for really bolstering the party's DPS. Crit chance down can be situationally strong in some fights, and the fact that Rainus has such good NP gain that she can spam her NP and stack these debuffs makes them significantly better. But the most interesting aspect of her Noble Phantasm is the ability to ignore class disadvantage. This means that classes that normally deal additional damage towards your party will have that bonus damage nullified. This is tremendously useful for Berserkers since they receive bonus damage from every class. Rainus can effectively remove a Berserker's biggest weakness while keeping their own class advantage against enemies intact. And because Rainus can spam her Noble Phantasm, it isn't too hard to keep this buff active for nearly the entire fight. Rainus has the unique ability to be the ideal Berserker support and effectively turn any Zerker into a tank. Or at the very least, she can make it so that they can survive for longer battles. 
But even aside from Berserkers, the support that she provides from her skills in terms of NP charge, defense buffs, and attack steroids is universally beneficial to just about any DPS, and even some stall teams. But where Rayness really shines is post interlude, when she gains the ability to match Waver and Scotty in the amount of NP charge that she can provide. Very few supports are capable of providing a 50% NP battery to an ally, and the ones that can are invaluable. So once Rayness receives her buff, she's going to become one of the premier farming supports for setting up all sorts of 3 turn farming teams, while still retaining her niche as a top tier support for berserkers and a generally good buffer all around. But she isn't without her faults, even though I compare her to Waver a number of times, it's important to note that Rayness isn't a 1 to 1 replacement for him. One major weakness of hers is her class. As a rider, she is prone to stealing stars away from your DPS, and while that does make her NP gain much better, it also severely hampers the team's DPS, so she can't be used effectively on any crit teams or with servants who rely on crit damage. Prior to her interlude, she's also fairly niche. She works best with berserkers, but she doesn't provide enough buffs to outshine the other top tier supports, which makes her more of a secondary support rather than someone who can carry the whole team like Merlin or Tamamo. When it comes to team comps, Rainus can fit well alongside most servants, especially berserkers. She also does well when supporting DPS servants that rely on their NP for farming. Servants like Jean Archer, Sieg, and Mordred Rider benefit a lot from Rainus' skills. Rainus can easily set them up to loop with their NPs, and if you pair her with an additional NP battery support like Waver or Paracelsus, they can even 3 turn farm. Rainus' high attack buff also helps them to hit over higher HP enemy waves. For longer battles, Rainus can make use of her Noble Phantasm to support berserkers like Vlad, Herc, and Jean Alter. All three of them have strong built in defensive skills already, but Rainus can push them over the edge and keep them alive for long periods of time, as well as make them even stronger by stacking defense down debuffs on enemies and helping to charge their NP gauge. Rainus' Bondcraft Essence is El Malloy Tea Time. It increases Arch card effectiveness of the party by 15%. This is a great craft essence to use on Rainus since she doesn't really need damage and it does help bolster her NP gain as well as the NP gain and damage of the entire party. Other than that, I recommend giving her CEs that give her additional NP gain so that she can make most use of her Noble Phantasm, like Painting Summer, Magical Girl of Sapphire, Divine Banquet, and Prisma Cosmos. You can also use craft essences that help her with star generating, like 2030, Annual General Meeting, Fox Wedding, and Seaside Luxury. Just keep in mind that as a rider, Rainus is going to take a significant portion of the stars that she generates. In the future, Springtime Kodo Strings can also be useful for her since it not only boosts NP gain significantly, but also her overcharge as well. As for command codes, Mages of Flowers is very good for increasing NP charge, which helps Rainus with spamming out her Noble Phantasm. Overall, Rainus is a unique support who will eventually become one of the best in the game. At release, she provides a wealth of high utility buffs for every situation, and she works phenomenally well in her niche as a Berserker support if you want to use a more unorthodox team. After her buff though, she gains access to an incredibly strong toolkit for farming that is on par with the likes of Waver and Scotty. Unfortunately though, that buff is more than a year away, so it will take some time before she reaches that level in NA. And her kit prior to that buff is a little niche and underwhelming compared to her competition. Additionally, even post buff, her class still puts her at a disadvantage as she does tend to steal stars away from your DPS. So Rayness gets two scores from me. At release, she gets a B plus, which is upgraded to an A plus after her interlude. She's still a solid support at release, with enough utility to fit into nearly any team, but it isn't until she gets that buff on her third skill that she truly becomes exceptional. And those are my thoughts on Rayness. Keep in mind that she does have another raid up next year when her buff comes, so you don't need to roll for her immediately if you're saving. Unless you're a degenerate like me who just wants to see that smug face glaring at you in disgust. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, all linked in the description down below. And I'll see you all in the next Servants 
Spotlight, Silveroni out. Later.